In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the tension and magnitude of wires using vectors. The question reads, ropes 3 meter and 5 meters in length are fastened to a holiday decoration that is suspended over a town square. The decoration has a mass of 5 kilograms. The ropes, fastened at different heights, make an angle of 52 degrees and 40 degrees with the horizontal. Find the tension in each wire and the magnitude of each tension. So what we're looking for is the tension of this wire, that wire, and of course, the force exerted by this ornament. The first thing that I want to do here is draw these wires out as vectors in an xy plane. Here's what I mean. What you see on your screen is an xy plane. And for this vector, we'll start at the origin, and it will be 40 degrees from the horizontal. And the reason why I know it's 40 degrees from the horizontal is because that's an alternating angle. So if we pretend that that's parallel and this line right here is parallel, that angle and that angle are the same. So my vector will look like this, and the angle here is 40 degrees, and that's 5 meters. Similarly, if that's 52, then the angle with respect to the horizontal will also be 52. That vector will look like this. In addition, we have this ornament hanging downwards that can also be drawn as a vector, shown in red, and we know some information about this. We know that it's five kilograms, and there's a force of gravity acting on this object. Gravity has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So I'll write down 9.8 meters per second squared. Now if you don't know already, tension is a force, and force has its own units, Newton. Remember that one Newton is equal to one kilogram times meters per second squared. So if I multiply these two numbers out, I'll end up with the tension of this vector in Newtons. Let's go ahead and do that. Five times 9.8 gives us 49 Newtons. So this wire, this ornament, exerts 49 Newtons of force. Unfortunately, however, we don't know the force exerted by this wire or by this wire. So what I will do is break these vectors down into their components. So this vector has an x and y component, so does this, and so does that. This is what these components should look like. Starting with the first wire, the x component of this vector will be right here, where I'm hovering over, along this horizontal. And using trigonometric functions, we would need the adjacent, and we're looking for the tension which is the vector itself, adjacent on hypotenuse is cosine. So the x component of vector 1, I'll make a little table here, vector 1, x and y, the x component is cosine at 40 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is the x component, over the magnitude of the tension, which I'll call t1. Now rearranging for the x component and multiply both sides by t1, and we end up with t1 times cosine 40 degrees is equal to a without this denominator. Similarly, I'll find the y component of this vector using the same method. Rather than using cosine, however, we're looking for this part. That's the y component, so we'll use sine. Sine at 40 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is what we're looking for. Let's call it O over, once again, the hypotenuse is unknown, T sub 1. Multiplying both sides by T sub 1, we end up with the following expression. Now what we have to do is continue this process for each of these vectors. Let's call this vector 2. And remember the cast rule? All trigonometric functions are positive here. Only sine is positive here. Tangent is positive in this quadrant, and cosine is positive in this quadrant only. The reason why I'm telling you this is, let's say I want the x component of this vector. The x component has to be negative, because only sine is positive. So I'll write down cosine of 52 degrees times the tension, T2, and that is equal to the adjacent. Also, like I mentioned, this needs to be negative because of the cast rule. 
Now, of course, had you not used an acute angle of 52 degrees, you wouldn't need to make this negative because writing down cosine of an angle greater than 90 using the cosine function would already give you a negative. But because 52 is an acute angle, we have to follow the cast rule. For the y component, we use sine, and sine is always positive in this quadrant, so we don't have to worry about changing its symbol. That's t2, and that is equal to the opposite, or the y component. Finally, for this one, so I'm going to call that vector 3. To find the x component, we'll write down cosine at angle 270 times the tension, which is known, that's 49. Cosine at 270 degrees, using our calculator, will give you 0. So this is 0. For the y component, we'll use sine at 270. The tension is 49. Sine at 270 degrees is equal to negative 1. So the y component is negative 49. Once you find all your x and your y components, you want to add them up. And one thing that I didn't mention is that this object that's hanging from these two wires is at equilibrium. It's not moving in any particular direction. It's staying still. And because of that, the sum of all the forces acting on it should equal to 0. So with that said, adding this component, this component, and that component should equal to 0. Adding all three of these should also equal to 0. Let me show you what I mean. Starting with the x components, I'll write down t sub 1 cosine at 40 degrees plus negative t sub 2 times cosine at 52 degrees plus 0 is equal to 0. That takes care of my x component of my resultant vector. Now moving on to these ones, t sub 1 sine at 40 degrees plus t sub 2 sine at 52 degrees plus negative 49 is equal to 0. Let's clean this up a little bit. We have a plus and a minus side by side, so we'll just write down minus. The same thing here, that becomes minus 49. And at the same time, I'll bring this constant over to the right side, where it becomes positive 49. As you can tell, what you have here is a system of equations. That's right, a linear system of equations that you can solve by elimination or substitution method. In case you haven't seen that in a while, Technically, what you can do is solve for t sub 1 in one of these equations and substitute it into the other equation. So I'll take this term over to the right side and divide both sides by cosine 40, and I have t sub 1 isolated. So if I have t sub 1 isolated, it will look like this. t sub 2 cosine 52 degrees over cosine of 40 degrees. And I'll take this content and place it right into here. So equation 2 is exclusively in terms of t sub 2, which you can solve for algebraically. Let me show you. We have t sub 2 cosine 52 degrees over cosine 40 degrees. Multiply 2, sine of 40 degrees, plus t sub 2 sine of 52 degrees is equal to 49. All I have to do is evaluate all of these, evaluate that, add those numbers up, and I'll end up with a number times t sub 2, which I can then solve for t sub 2. Here's what I mean. Cosine of 52 degrees times sine of 40 degrees, multiplying these two together, divided by cosine of 40 degrees, make sure that your calculator is in degrees, we end up with 0 0.5166, 0 0.5166 times t sub 2 plus, over here, sine of 52 is approximately 0 0.7880 times t sub 2 is equal to 49. I'll add these coefficients up plus 0 0.5166, we end up with 1.304, 1.304 
t sub 2 is equal to 49. Divide both sides by this coefficient, where we end up with t sub 2 is equal to 49, divided by the number that I just recorded, 37.55. So the tension of wire 2 is 37.55 newtons. Now keep in mind that I'm not taking into account significant figures here, so make sure that you follow your teacher's instructions when you do this. To find T sub 1, I'll take this number now and substitute it right there. So the number on my screen times cosine of 52 divided by cosine of 40. The second wire has a tension of approximately 30 point 1.8 newtons. So to answer this question, the tension of wire 1 and wire 2 are 30.18 and 37.55 respectively. Of course, this is the magnitude, and if you want to record this as a vector, you would write down the angle that corresponds to both. So the angle here was 52 degrees, and the angle here according to the chart, was 40 degrees. And there you have it. That is how to find the tension and magnitude of wires using vectors.